All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So we have been learning a lot with the Glazerit, but in this here video, I want to let you guys know that you want to use all the years of experience that you've had in the past when you use a new system. You just don't want to throw out all those years of things you learn because paint is paint and even these cameras are the same throughout most of the system. So we came across a color yesterday that was definitely going to be a problem. I could tell right away when I seen this being it was an older vehicle and it is a gold. So what we did was last night, this was a load from yesterday. We sprayed our card and I'm going to show you guys the steps that I did because I had to think back to the way that I used to do things. A lot of this trade is going to be things you pick up through the years. So you're not going to just throw those out because you've got a new system. You're going to start to bring back some of the old things that you do on a day to day into that new system. And that's what's going to get you flowing through these jobs. So I'll show you guys what we did. We have a spray out card here. Last night we took a shot. I'm going to show you guys what I did. That way we could ensure a good match. And we used some of the old tricks of the trade to get a nice match on this job. And I'll show you guys what we're dealing with. All right. So this here's the vehicle. We've got an Acura here. And uh, this is an old color. This is a 2012 vehicle. So right away when I seen this job, I knew that this was going to be a tricky color being it was old, probably faded. And uh, we were going to have to do some things on this one being we do not have chips with the Glazer system. So we're going to be painting a new bumper. We did a repair on the fender and then we're going to be blending the door on this one. So first thing I did was bring my camera over here, knowing that we do not have chips to compare that to. So once we took a camera shot, we went back over to the uh, vehicle and I'll show you guys the parts, what we did. We buffed up our panel like Lazarus wants you to do that way that that camera can get a good match because if you have scratches in the clear, it's not going to be able to see that color the right way. So we did polish it up. That's a big thing you want to make sure that you do when you're using this paint and the camera. Don't just clean the panel and go over there and hit it with the uh, camera because you're not going to get a true reading without having that clear as shiny as possible and this is an older vehicle so we had to do the one step compound to get it polished up all right so these are our parts we've got our blend door we've got our fender that was repaired and we have our new bumper so what we did here was we polished the center of this door up what i like to do is either go ahead and take your camera shot of the panel that you're going to be blending or the panel that you're going to be butt matching to so on this one here we're going to be panel painting the bumper to the other side fender but i like to check the blend door as well as that panel over there so what you can do is take multiple shots maybe take two shots of the door and three shots of the fender make sure you polish up both sides i've seen a lot of guys through the years go over to a part of that vehicle that isn't even in the area that you're going to be painting not knowing if that panel had been painted and you want to get that camera to me as close to that area that you're going to be painting because Cars will fade depending on the location of that vehicle, where it's parked. Maybe the person works out in a certain area where they have half of that car shaded by a tree. I want to make sure that I'm going to be taking that reading right on the money where I'm going to be putting my color because as we know, when you used to have the chips, there was variances based off of where that car might have been manufactured. So that's the same thing with the conditions of these vehicles where these customers have them where they sit every day, where they may be parked in a garage, that's gonna change the color. And that's why you need to get a shot in the area of the area you're gonna be repairing. So let's go ahead over to our camera now and I'll show you guys what I figured out. All right, so this here is the camera and you guys remember when we did the original video with Pat, he wanted us to put our RO as well as the manufacturer in the camera. That's what we did last night. So we went ahead and we put in the manufacturer and the RO and we searched it and we got a 57% so that's not a good reading they have an adjustment but it's not in the green you guys see that the red and then you have this here yellow which isn't going to be a good match so what I thought was let's go back to our old ways of doing things and let's go ahead and eliminate the manufacturer and see what this thing picks up And right away, you guys see it went from red to green. Now we have 
a decent match with an 89 and then over here we have an adjustment for the green so so what i wanted to show you guys was that sometimes you're going to go back to the old ways of doing things you guys know we have a lot of years experience out here in the trade what i like to do sometimes is keep that open that means it's going to search all the formulas that this here system has and not keep it limited to that manufacturer specific colors so right there you can see that we now have a blendable color based off of what the camera is telling us so so what we did last night was we went ahead we mixed that color up sprayed our car that way when we came in this morning we know we're going to be able to just go ahead and roll on that so these are all things that i've been doing for many years you don't want to come into the morning checking your colors you want to be able to get that color dialed in at night that way you're able to bang through that job and get it done so we'll go ahead and check our color now to the door i wanted to show you guys how nice that color matches by doing a wild card even though it says isuzu it matches the door so let's take that card over now and check it to the door all right so we've got our card and we've got our sunlight you guys know we like the luma light here it's small you can hook it to the gun and you could also have it in your pocket but look at how nice that their color matches by doing a wild card search so even though this is an isuzu color you guys can see there that that will definitely blend being that we're matching it up right there to a butt match and we have that nice of a color match so you want to make sure that you check these colors with a light but the best way of checking a color is going to be with the natural sunlight so let's go out and check it there all right so we're just catching the sun as it's coming up and that is actually a good time to check because you'll have it coming in from a certain angle sometimes those flops are the ones that'll kill you so to me the best lighting is the sun but if you're inside you're going to want to get a light like this to check your color let's get in prep it out get this thing shot and check it out all finished up All right, so we've got everything prepped out. We are gonna be shooting this with another bumper over here for a Denali, that's a black. So we always do our blacks or our solid colors last. That way all the metallic has settled down and we can go ahead and make sure we don't have any remnants in the air landing on our black. So always do your solids last. Now with the spray out card, we did use L02 sealer on the card. So you're gonna make sure that you do exactly what you have on the card with the sealer as well as the spray gun so this one here is going to end up getting sealer on the front edge of the door not only is this for coverage reasons because we know that the basf does cover very well and we don't have a lot of problems with coverage but it's the same as i've told you guys years ago whatever substrate that paint lands on can change the way that that metallic is going to lay so if you have a sealed fender meeting up with a door that is sanded and you just apply the base coat it could have a little bit of a variation so always go ahead and hit the front edge of the blend door or the blend panel that way you know when your part meets up it's going to have the same lay in the metallics and everything is going to look good once it butts back up so
All right, so we've got our sealer on there. And you guys see we put our sealer on as normal, same as anything else. You guys see I turn the gun sideways when you're doing your blend panel. You're gonna get a nicer transition with the sealer doing that. And also we did use the DV-1, so I turned my old clear coat gun into my sealer gun now with the DV-1 and it's spraying a beautiful, nice flat coat. That was a gun I had for many years and now it's turned into the sealer gun. So once we let that set up, we're gonna go ahead and tack the end of the blend panel and then we're gonna go ahead and move into our color. You guys know we use the wet bed and then we have to put our one and a half coats back to back on it. So let's go ahead, tack it off and get shooting on the base coat.
All right, so it's as easy as that. You apply the one heavy coat for coverage and then you back up and you give it a nice medium coat over the top to lay out the metallics. You guys see that we're using our old 3M gun. That gun lays it out beautifully. You have a lot of control with that gun because it's confined to one area, whereas some of the other guns like to atomize it a lot and have a bigger pattern. So I'm already now trying out my other guns and bringing things back in. So like I told you guys in the beginning of the video, they give you a starting point because they don't know how experienced you are as a painter. When these reps come in, they have to have a ground zero area to start with, and that way they have guidelines for you. Once you get the system dialed in, you'll start bringing back some of your guns, you'll start bringing back some of your techniques, and then you'll have everything working great because you'll have your experience from all the years with the new product, and everything will be just like the old days. So we are still getting dialed in with it. We're still trying to get our control coats nice and even because you have that one shot you don't want to go back in there you can go back in and put more on but then you defeat the purpose of the one and a half coat where all that water comes out and you get the maximum gloss so we're going to go ahead and let that flash we'll go in and hit it with our clear and then we'll check everything out when it's all finished up
All right, so what do you guys think? I think that color definitely is very, very good. You guys can see here that the blend is, uh, you can't even notice it, as well as how nice the panels match up for the color being we sealed this as well as the blend panel. That way our metallics are gonna lay the same way they lay here as the same way they're gonna lay once that fender is butted up. So what did we get from this here video? You always wanna follow the baseline and go by the rules, put the code in. But when you have a problem, you're gonna have to use your knowledge being we are professionals. So they come, they give us the guidelines, they try to give us what we need to start off and that's exactly what Patrick did. But then it's up to us, the painter, to be able to get out of that job to do what we need to do to make it look right. So we could have mixed up the original color and played with it and tinted it. But to me, the best bet is to use that camera for what it is designed for. So I hope you guys got something out of this video and we'll see you guys on the next one.